Hi, welcome once again back to our workshop on math as a second language. And today we're going to discuss the idea of how some numbers are insignificant in relationship to other numbers. I'm reminded of the story of the curator at a museum who was describing to the visitors that a particular artifact was approximately 1,013,000 years old. And people were amazed at how they could guess the age of something that accurately. And they said, how did they get that the age was approximately 1,013,000 years old? And the curator said, it wasn't hard. When I came to work here, they told me it was approximately 1,000,000 years old, and I've been working here for 13 years. I thought that was a funny story. I don't know how you react to that. But the point is, when we do place value arithmetic, we do it from right to left. That means first we, let's say we're adding. First we add the ones, then we add the tens, then we add the hundreds, then we add the thousands, etc. Now, if we make the assumption that the chances of making a careless mistake are greatest when you become tired, you're adding the most significant digits when you're the most tired. In other words, if you're going to make a mistake and you're adding a huge amounts of, uh, of, of valued numbers, if you're going to make that kind of a mistake, better to make a mistake in the dollars column than in the billions dollars column. So the question comes up, how do we get a rough estimate as we're doing problems traditionally using the algorithms uh, as to whether or not an answer is reasonable or not? How can we tell just by looking whether an answer is preposterous or not? And that leads to the subject that we usually refer to in the curriculum as rounding off. So let's talk a little bit about that. Here's a pretty big number. Units, thousands, millions, billions, trillions. 2 trillion, 368 billion, 987 million, 547,876. That's a pretty big number. But if the noun that we're using is trillions, in other words, we're counting 1 trillion, 2 trillion, 3 trillion, notice that this number here, which is a large number when we're counting by ones, is a relatively small fraction when we're counting by trillions. In other words, this number comes up after we've reached 2 trillion, but before we get to 3 trillion. In other words, with the noun being trillions, this is no longer a whole number. It's a fraction, or what we sometimes call a mixed number. It's 2 trillion plus something else. So the question is, uh, what could we say about this? Let's make up a question. If we're counting by trillions, What's the closest we're going to come to 2 trillion, 368 billion, 987 million, 547,876? Well, we know it's going to come up after we get to 2 trillion, but before we get to 3 trillion. And not only that, the halfway point between these two numbers is 2 trillion, 500 million. In other words, looking at these two, at this number, we can see it's between 2 trillion and 3 trillion, but closer to, three, to 2 trillion. So we might say, if we're counting by trillions, the closest number you can come to would be 2 trillion. In other words, 3 trillion would be off by more, 1 trillion would be way off. 2 trillion is the closest number that you come to if you're counting by trillions here. Now, how does this help us? Well, suppose we're adding up a bunch of numbers like this. I just copied our first number over again. Now we have five more just like this. Well, you can see what's going to happen here. Even if you're using a calculator, the likelihood of putting in a typographical error, a typo here, is pretty great. If you're doing it longhand, it's so tedious. By the time you get to this column here, you could be making lots of mistakes. So what we say is something like this. Look, if we're counting by trillions, this number is more than 2 trillion, but less than 3 trillion. See, let's, let's make a little, we'll put boundaries on here. This number comes up after 2 trillion, but before 3 trillion. This number, since there's a 7 over here, tells me it comes up after 7 trillion, but before 8 trillion. So this number is between 7 trillion and 8 trillion. Using the same kind of logic, 
This tells me that counting by trillions, this comes up after six trillion, but before seven trillion. And this number comes up, what, after five trillion, but before six trillion. And this number comes up after eight trillion, but before nine trillion. Now, these are relatively easy to add. Two plus seven is nine, plus six is 15, plus five is 20, plus eight is 28. And this becomes what? Three plus eight is 11, plus seven is 18, plus six is 24, plus nine is 33. So what this tells me is, I don't know what the answer to this problem is, but it better be between 28 trillion and 33 trillion. Now, there's a lot of numbers between 28 trillion and 33 trillion, but there's lots more that aren't. So at least when you do this problem, it should give you a pretty good estimate of what the range is of possible answers. Now, so far we haven't rounded off. We've just found upper and lower bounds. Rounding off means, okay, now that we know the two, the two bounds, the lower bound and the upper bound, which one is it closer to? Well, you see, every place where the next digit is less than a five means it's closer to this number. In other words, halfway in between, the next digit would be a five. So in other words, this number is not only between two trillion and three trillion, it's closer to two trillion. This number is between seven trillion and eight trillion, but it's closer to seven trillion. This number is between six trillion and, uh, and seven trillion, but again, this is only a four here, it's still closer to six trillion. This number is between five trillion and six trillion, but this is over 500, it's 529, so it's closer to this guy. And this fellow here is between eight trillion and nine trillion, but this digit here being a six tells me I'm more than halfway. So I can get even closer by saying, not only is it between this number and this number, but let's see, two and nine, two and seven are nine and six, a 15, and 6 is 21, and 9 is 30. So what this tells us is that this number should be between 28 trillion and 33 trillion, but closer to 30 trillion. I've spared you the problem of having to listen to me add this up, but I did do this on my calculator, and the exact answer was 30 trillion, 323 billion, 490 million three hundred forty seven thousand four hundred and twenty two uh, there's again a lot of numbers in this range here so at least this number is in the right range and even if it's wrong i know it's fairly reasonable if all i'm doing is worrying about trillions now this is all there is to rounding off if i say round off to the nearest thousand all it means is if you're counting by thousands What's the closest you're going to come to this number? And we use that to make estimates, uh, even using the calculator, even using the calculator. Let, let me just show you something here. Suppose I have a calculator and I'm computing 3.14 times 2.7. And by mistake, without realizing it, I didn't hit the decimal point here hard enough. And so even though I thought I was putting in 3.14, I was really putting in 314. So in other words, the computer, the calculator, read the problem this way. And so it gave me an answer. I use this example in class a lot. It's not that I'm a mental whiz. I, I've just used this example many times. So the calculator gives you this error, and if all you do it gives you this answer, and if all you're doing is relying on the calculator, you say, how could this be wrong? The calculator doesn't make mistakes. Well, that's right, the calculator doesn't make mistakes, but the person putting in the numbers might make mistakes. Here's what I want you to be able to see, even though we haven't talked about this yet in the sequence in our course. Whatever 3.14 is, it's more than three, but less than four. And whatever 2.7 is, it's more than two, but less than three. By the way, I don't know if any of you ever got confused this way. I remember when I was first learning, I got confused as to which way these little arrows should go. And I was taught eventually to say, the arrowhead points to the smaller number. I found out later the historical origin of this symbol, and I thought you might enjoy seeing it. See, the equal sign, 
consists of two parallel lines. And the symbolism is that since the space at both ends is the same, it represents equal numbers. So if you wanted to indicate that one number was less than the other, you would slant the two lines slightly, and the smaller space would correspond to where the smaller number was. See, in other words, you could read this that A is less than B, or B is greater than A. The problem was that eventually people got confused as to whether this was a slanted unequal sign or a sloppy equal sign. So they said to avoid any confusion, what we'll do is, is we'll make the small distance zero. In other words, we, just, we won't just push these closer together. What we'll do is we'll push them together so there's no space between them. And that's how the origin came up that the arrow points to the smaller number. So there's something you might just like to know in a conversation. But at any rate, look what happens now. 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 3 is 12. So without even knowing what the answer is, you should know before you even start this problem is that the correct answer has to be between 6 and 12. Well, there are many numbers between 6 and 12, but 847.8 isn't one of them. So this is the idea of rounding off, estimating. And uh, let's see how we were usually taught to do this by rote memory. Uh, I, was, I remember doing problems like this. Round off, but I didn't say, no. When I was asked the question, they didn't say use rote. They just said round off 5,286 to the nearest thousand. And the way I was taught was you go to the, you look to see where they're telling you to round off to, and you check off that column. And then what you do is to the right of that column, you replace every digit by zero. And then if the first digit to the right of the checked off digit was less than five, less than five, you left this number alone. If it was more than five, you moved this up by one. So in doing this problem, the mechanical way, I would check off here, replace these by zeros, notice that this is less than five, so I would keep this, and the answer would be 5,000. Now what this was saying logically was, if I'm counting by thousands, obviously this is gonna come up after 5,000, but before 6,000. But halfway between 5,000 and 6,000 is 5,500. And, and where is 5,286? It's between 5,000 and 5,500. So it's in this half of the interval, meaning it's less than halfway. And so this would be the uh, mathematical explanation as to why this method works. So for example, Let's suppose the problem had been round off 5,786 to the nearest thousand. So the mechanical way would again say what? Check this digit off, replace everything to the right by zeros. Seven is more than five, so we make this a six. And the logical way says, look, when you're counting by thousands, 5,786 comes up after 5,000, but before 6,000. Halfway in between 5,000 and 6,000 is 5,500. And 5,786 is in the half between 5,500 and 6,000. So it's not only between 5,000 and 6,000, it's actually closer to 6,000. And uh, that's basically what rounding off is. Let's just uh, try another problem just to make sure you see the connection between the formal wording and the informal wording. It says, let's round off 56,892 to the nearest thousand. In other words, if we're counting by thousands, what's the closest we can come? Well, if you're counting by thousands, this is gonna come up after 56,000 and before 57,000. And because this is an eight, it's easy to see that this number is much closer to 57,000 than to 56,000. So the answer would be 57,000. Sometimes we're even more liberal. We may want to round it off to the nearest 10,000 instead of the nearest thousand. In other words, we're happy with a less accurate estimate. Well, how would we do this? Again, the mechanical way would say, look to the place where you want to round off to, 
This is the 10,000th place, okay? Draw this line, replace everything else by zeros. Since this is more than five, move this guy up by one, and so round it off the nearest 10,000, the answer would be 60,000. In other words, what this says is, if you're counting by 10,000s, the closest you're ever gonna come to 56,892 is uh, 600,000. And notice because we're being less accurate here, there's a larger range for the error to be in. In other words, here we saw that the answer should be approximately 56,000. But when we get a little bit more liberal, we see the answer is approximately uh, 60,000. Well, again, we're running towards the end of our lecture time, and it's time again for our practice problem. And I thought you might enjoy this one. It's a little bit different from what we've been talking about. Remember what you're gonna do. You're gonna pause your video on the problem, work it out, and then come back and see our solution. And what the problem says is, without actually performing the indicated multiplication, find a good approximation for the product 98 times 84. And by the way, before I even uh, have you to do this problem, notice that the phrase good approximation is kind of subjective. What's a good approximation for one might not be for another. So there could possibly be more than one answer you'd like to give for this. Anyway, when you're through working on this problem, resume watching, and I'll conclude the lecture by going through the problem with you. See, again, to visualize 98 times 84, it's a good way to think in terms of money. Imagine you're selling something and you've received 98 checks uh, at $84 each. Well, that's certainly less money than you would have got if you had 100 checks at $84 each. In other words, whatever this number is, it's less than 100 times 84, right? And 100 times 84 is 8,400. And so that would be the approximation. I just worked this out for you. The exact answer is 8,232. And by the way, you could also look at this a different way. You could say, suppose I bought 100 objects at $84 each. That would have cost me $8,400. Now I find out that two of those objects were defective. So I returned them. So now I've only bought eight, 98 objects, but I've still paid $84 for each of them. So what did I get back? I got $84 back twice. That's $168. And so it must mean I paid $8,232, uh, which is the same answer I got doing it the mechanical way. And what I want you to see is that, again, in doing a problem like this, it's nice to know that the answer is going to be somewhere around 8400 And that will help you uh, recognize that your answer is somewhat reasonable, okay? Now, this has become a little bit longer than uh, I usually like to make these lectures, but I think it, I hope it's held your attention long enough, and I am looking forward to seeing you again next time when we're going to look at what I call unadding. Most people call it subtraction, but I want to show you uh, a very important way of unifying all of the operations of arithmetic. But more about that next time. Until next time, have fun, and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon.